Then would you please uh, stand with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, this ancient creed that uh, reflect the biblical truths. Let's confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, as we uh, call the worship team, uh, just a reminder too, where we don't uh, take an offering of passing the plates, but uh, you're still uh, welcome and free to uh, give offerings unto the Lord. There's a basket uh, in the entryway as you leave church uh, today. So uh, come on up, our worship team, as they guide us in praising the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor. Try it again. Don't think that would work. <laughs> I was just thinking that the song's called No Greater Love, but uh, there's no, no greater uh, song, guys. Nice job, guys. Thank you, by the way. We, we don't thank you enough, actually. Thank you for picking this up. Um, yeah, this song is called No Greater Love. How marvelous. Uh, Pastor Satan's going to be wrapping up his uh, sermon series uh, here. I think we're down to maybe a week or two here on. on and, and of course, I just did a search on songs that have the word. Oh, great. Uh, no, vanity. Oh, vanity. Well. <laughs> Those are vanity. So you'll hear that word in here. Um, that's how we came across this. But of course, uh, um, this isn't going to sound as beautiful as you guys saying in the beginning of I Stand Amazed. But uh, you will actually hear that chorus in this song. And uh, yeah, just reading uh, John 3.16, we know well for God so loved one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And we just focus on that greater, that great love, that one amazing grace. Let's sing this. That there's no greater love that I've ever found.
Okay, let's continue with worshiping the Lord, going into the praise and worship plan, starting with the corner. So. Thank you. 
you ever had a, a friend that tended to repeat certain stories over and over again? Maybe that friend is me. I, I'm sorry if you ever repeat illustrations. Sometimes I feel that I do that. I apologize for that. But you have a friend that no matter what, they, they tend to kind of tell the same story over and over again. And, and when they start, you just know how it's going to end. But you just listen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, and then you kind of laugh at the end of the conclusion to that. Uh, I appreciate that, um, and, and that's okay, uh, as I think of that, uh, even thinking of, of those that maybe have a memory loss of repeating stories. I remember visiting a lady many, many years ago that she would say the same three things over and over again, and, and I, felt, I felt bad uh, for, for them and what they were going through, but you know what? I remember exactly what she said. And that's because repetition has that effect on us. Uh, repeating uh, certain words or repeating certain phrases uh, has a way to really drive it into our minds and into our hearts. And uh, I'm going to do something today that I don't know if I've ever done this in my preaching career. Uh, we're going to cover a number of chapters all at once today. So we've been walking verse by verse through Ecclesiastes. Uh, we've been going through from the start of Ecclesiastes all the way up until this point. And uh, I have a couple of reasons for doing this. Uh, one is Solomon, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that Solomon just is starting to repeat himself, but I am saying he is kind of repeating himself a little bit. But I think he's doing that on purpose. To say the same thing that he said before in the book, but maybe in a little bit of a different shade. And you know what? That's okay. Re repetition, in certain, if done a certain way, has a way of drilling it into our minds and into our hearts. And I think that that's what God is doing for us. As Solomon is repeating some of the same things that he said earlier in the book. Did I mention, I think I mentioned way back at the beginning of the sermon series in Ecclesiastes that the, the, the word vanity is used 31 times throughout the book. And over the course of chapters 8 through 11, which is what we're going to cover this morning, buckle up, right? Open your Bible to Ecclesiastes 8. We're going to cover uh, a couple of key sections here where Solomon brings back this phrase, all is vanity. And the rest of Ecclesiastes chapters 8 through 11, it feels a lot like the book of Proverbs. We covered that a, a year or two ago here at King of Glory, walking through Proverbs, hearing a sermon series through Proverbs. In, in Proverbs, there's, there's a saying here about this topic, and then the next verse, there's a saying here that is about that topic there. And they're not always super connected to each other. There's just good wisdom put together, talking about various topics. And so that's what Ecclesiastes 8 through 11 feels like. It's a collection of miscellaneous proverbs, miscellaneous wise sayings, living out this life of faith, this life of wisdom that Solomon has come to. He has come to grips with that as he has examined life and the purpose uh, of life. And so, in light of that, I'd like to have this sermon and then next week on Confirmation Sunday, we'll end with chapter 12, which speaks to you. And I think that's so fitting uh, for Confirmation Sunday as well. So, uh, like I said, buckle up. We're going to go through a couple of key sections here where the phrase vanity is used and some of the similar types of conclusions that Solomon comes to. And, and this, this message, I, I pray that God has, does the work of driving these truths deep into our hearts, imprinting God's wisdom on us as we live in this world where we need a lot of wisdom. So, first little section I'd like you to go with me is Ecclesiastes 8, verses 9 through 17. Listen uh, to these, these words. Ecclesiastes 8, starting verse 9. He said, all this I observe while applying my heart to all that is done under the sun, when man had power over man to his hurt. Then I saw the wicked buried. They used to go in and out of the holy place and were praised in the city where they had done such things. This also is vanity. 
because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily. The heart of the children of man is fully set to do evil. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and prolongs his life, yet I know that it will be well with those who fear God because they fear before him. But it will not be well with the wicked, neither will he prolong his days like a shadow, because he does not fear before God. There is a vanity that takes place on earth, that there are righteous people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked, and there are wicked people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. I said that this also is, say it with me, vanity. And I commend joy, for man has nothing better under the sun but to eat and to drink and to be joyful, for this will go with him in his toil through the days of his life that God has given him under the sun. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on earth, how neither day nor night do one's eyes sleep, then I saw all the work that God, God, that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much, man, however much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. And so in this little section here in Ecclesiastes 8, Solomon is starting to uh, continue to wind up his book and to touch on some of the same things that he is, he's touched on, right? He, some of these verses sound very similar to the verses that we've looked at and, and uh, thought about before in this book. But if I were to summarize this mini section here in chapter 8, is the expression that you may be here in this world, and maybe you've said it to yourself, why do good things happen, or why do bad things happen to good people, and why do good things happen to bad people, right? Have you said that? Have you heard people say that? Why does it seem that, you know, that, that's such a wicked person, and, and he or she, they're getting all the good things that are happening to them. What's up with that? And why does it seem that there's a righteous person, a person that is righteous, that it says, especially in verse 14, that it happens according to the deeds of the wicked? Why is that? An answer is not given specifically, other than this. That no matter the circumstances of your life, be it you are a righteous person or an unrighteous person, or good happens to you or bad happens to you, what matters is whether or not you fear the Lord. That's, that's one of the things I appreciate about Solomon as he's wrestled with life and as he's thought about it and as he's observed everything that happens under the sun, all business, all work, all that happens under the sun, he has come to a place of seeing life through fearing the Lord, respecting and honoring God in life. When we come to that place, when we see that, yes, there is injustice, there is pe wicked people have good things happen to them, and, and good people have horrible things happen to them, and we say at the end of the day, and, and we feel it, right, all is vanity. This is vanity, Solomon is saying. It's meaningless, and they're chasing after the wind. And yet... We're able to have that biblical perspective. We're able to fear God. Solomon makes that conclusion in verse 13 of this. He says, But it will not be well with the wicked. Neither will he prolong his days like a shadow, because he does not fear before the Lord. We're able to uh, entrust ourselves to the Lord of the universe. Even as we see wickedness flourish, when... We might say, God, why are you allowing the, that wicked person to flourish? Or when we see horrible things happen to the righteous, we're able to entrust ourselves to them, to know that in the end, the Lord will make it right. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Solomon is saying that again. All, all I said, all of this is vanity. And so let's skip to another little section where Solomon continues to wrap up his book. Uh, chapter 9, verses 7 through 10. Listen to these verses with me. Solomon repeats some of the same th themes that have run through Ecclesiastes. 
as he synthesizes his findings after reflecting on life. Listen to Ecclesiastes 9, 7 through 10. He says, Go, eat your bread with joy. Drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. Let your garments always be white. Let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life <laughs> that he has given to you under the sun. Because that is your portion in the life and in your toil in which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. This is a theme that Solomon keeps repeating, and we've seen multiple times, especially in chapter 2 and chapter 3, and that's the theme of this. Enjoy life as a gift from God. And it might surprise you that laundry is included in that. Did you catch that here? You see in verse 8, let your garments always be white. Oh. I mean, it's, doing laundry is good too. Yeah. I appreciate the ordinariness of this as you as you go through life, as you enjoy life as a gift. Eat your bread with joy. As you oh, grab, throw that loaf of bread in your cart at Aldi or Walmart or wherever you get your food, and as you open that up and slather some butter on it, I'm sorry, it's getting too close to lunch time. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your life. Enjoy what God has given to you. Drink your wine with a merry heart. <clears throat> Did you catch why? In verse 7. We need to chew on this today. This is Solomon. After he's writing, he's been writing all this time, reflecting on life. He says at the end of verse 7, For God has already approved what you do. God has already approved what you do. Now, of course... If you are doing something sinful, he doesn't approve of that. But anything that is not explicitly sinful, if the Lord has called you to, to your job, to your vocation that you're called to right now, God has already approved of what you do. You don't have to wait for his approval to live your life. In the callings with which he calls you. This is the Ecclesiastes wisdom lived out. You're able to live life with confidence as you entrust yourself to God, as you fear Him, as you re realize that all of life is a gift from Him. God has already approved what you do, and so you're able to do your laundry in peace. Let your garments be white. Let that oil be lacking on your head. Go ahead and buy that bottle of shampoo. Enjoy <laughs> life with the wife that you love. All the days of your vain life. <laughs> People are crying kids. <laughs> it's all good. God has given this to us under the sun. Think about your life, friends. We've been wrestling with these truths through Ecclesiastes. And as I think about this, and there can be a restlessness and uneasiness for us as we look at everything that's happening in our world today. We might not really enjoy our lives. How can we laugh? How can we have joy when we see what's happening around us? We're able to do that because we see that God has given us this portion in life. Verse 9, in the toil, this, this is your portion, this is the lot, this is the toil with which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hands finds to do, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. This biblical confidence, this biblical wisdom God gives to us. I'm excited to think about this congregation. Having that kind of biblical hope, that kind of biblical confidence to do whatever our hands find to do. Knowing that God's given us this gift called life. Life is short, right? It is so short. God has given us this life to enjoy, to eat our bread with joy, to drink our wine with a merry heart. God has approved what we do. 
we're able to take a breath and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this life that you have given to me. And you know what? Solomon's not even done with that theme. He has another little section of that. Listen to uh, chapter 11. You flip with me. By the way, I know I'm covering a lot of chapters this morning, and I don't like to do that. There's the preacher man inside of me says, what are you doing? <laughs> but I, I want to encourage you. Can I challenge you to read through these chapters this week? And I'll add chapter 7 as well, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Maybe take them a chapter a day. I know we're usually given a chapter to read in a Bible reading plan, but these are these these chapters are like Proverbs, where there's a, a whole different topics together. If you want to read just a couple of verses and chew on that, and then later on in the day come back to verse three and through four, you know what I mean? Meditate upon these. They're worthy of meditation. Solomon's not done with enjoying life. Listen to uh, chapter 11, verses 7 through 10. It says, Light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. So if a person lives many years, let him rejoice in them all. But let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. The young people need bumper cars, too. <laughs> Bumpers for their, their actions. Verse 10, remove the vexation from your heart. Put away pain from your body, for youth and the dawn of life are... I love that. As we look out and the sun is shining today, verse 7, light is sweet. It's pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. <laughs> How funny in our day, you know, we're, we're in front of screens all the time, are we not? Inside, computers, at work, our tablets, our phones, our devices. Solomon says, get out and look at the sun. It's refreshing. It's pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. And then Solomon, as, as he starts to wind down his book, he has a word for generations. He talks to the, the older generations. Verse 8. He says, so if a person lives many years, what about you, friend? You think you've lived many years? He says, rejoice. Let him rejoice in them all. But remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. We're able, those, those of you who have lived longer lives, you're able to see that life is vanity, right? All is vanity. Can't make sense of it. And yet, life is also precious. God has given it to you as a gift. And you're able to rejoice in the good gift that God has given to you if you live many years. How refreshing is it to see older friends have this perspective, as opposed to older friends that are complaining and grumbling and, and life has just always been a, a grind and hard. You'd rather be around a friend that's receiving everything as a gift, rejoicing in all of the years God has given you. Maybe you haven't lived your life like that up to this point, but from this point forward, you can, as God changes you through his word. You're able to look forward and look back and say, God has given me this gift of life. I'm able to rejoice in it all. And then Solomon starts talking to the young man, which he's not going to be done. Next week we're going to hear chapter 12, which is very much for the young man, the young person. It says, rejoice, O young man, in your youth. Hey, you don't have aches and pains. Enjoy life. Enjoy, let your heart cheer you with the days that of, that of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. Enjoy this life that God has given to you. But then Solomon has that, that warning as well. But know 
<laughs> that all these things, God will bring you into judgment as well. Solomon is wrapping up all of this wisdom that he's collected as he has observed life. I encourage us to take time to meditate on these truths. To see that life is precious, life is confusing, life is amazing, life is exciting, life is frustrating, life is all of the above. And in the midst of all that happened under the sun, right, that's a theme throughout all, and we've heard that even in these verses this, this, today. In life under the sun, we're able to look to the one who is above the sun itself, who has given us all of these things. And so, we are changed. We're able to live in this world with this type of perspective. We're able to see what's happening around us with this kind of Biblical wisdom that God is shaping us and giving us as a gift, as he gives us this life as a precious gift. Would you pray with me? Oh, Father, we give you thanks for Ecclesiastes. Hard-hitting, thought-provoking, questioning life. But life is worth questioning and being thoughtful about. May we not just flip along through life not giving a thought about you or about all of creation. Lord, we thank you that we're able to see the world through a biblical lens as, as we have the wisdom of Solomon shaping and molding our hearts. Lord, forgive us for sinning. Forgive us for walking away from wisdom. Lord, give us hearts of wisdom as we enjoy the life that you have given to us in all of the vain days that you give to us to live upon this planet. Give us an eternal perspective, Lord. Lord, bless us now as we meditate and chew and apply these words to our lives. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let's, let's sing a hymn of response. Count your blessings. <coughs> Counting our blessings. Number 575, hymnal, and number 183, in the large prayer. <laughs>
the Lord together. And uh, we counted our blessings as we're going to send now uh, home and sent into our lives uh, to live uh, for Christ and as redeemed uh, sinners saved by grace. Now, uh, would you please stand with me as we pray the Lord's Prayer and uh, conclude our service this morning? Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive this benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.